Well, good morning. Wonderful to see you today. Thank you for uh, thank you for being here. What a beautiful Sunday morning. Hope you've had a great week. Uh, thank you to the praise team. I just think that sounds getting better and better, and I appreciate all their hard work. And it is so uh, well done. And it's time to start inviting our friends and our neighbors and our family to come and join us. And um, and let's see what the Lord does in our presence in this service. Well, um, as we look at the Lord's message today, we're in the Sermon on the Mount, and thank you, I want to thank Gannon uh, for being here last week, I told him what we were doing, I said, you know, take this section, so I understood he did, and, and uh, preached on uh, prayer, and I appreciate him doing that. I want to back up a little bit and do the end of chapter 5, and uh, the question, uh, first question I want to ask you this morning is, think about your life, do you, do you have any enemies? Do you have any enemies in life? And, uh, you know, we talked a couple of weeks ago about those maybe we don't get along with or um, those that are hard to get along with, but Jesus is going even deeper than that in this part of his teaching. He's saying, I mean, these are people that we just don't care to be around. Do you have anybody in life like that? Or is there a person out there that... Um, sure, you know, just doesn't look out for your best interest. You know, they don't, you know, they don't look out for your best interest. You don't trust them. You might think that they'll talk behind your back or you just are totally opposed to their viewpoints. Uh, maybe even if you can't think of an individual, maybe it's a nation. <laughs> maybe it's a people group. Maybe it's somebody you just consider an enemy. But bringing it closer to home, you know, I, I've seen people have enemies everywhere. I've even seen people have enemies within the same church. Can you imagine that? I mean, I have uh, seen and heard or people will say, you know, such and such won't even look me in the eye when we cross paths in the hallway at church. They don't even want to say hello. I mean, that's how fierce, how deep that this anger and enemy, uh, enemy relationship is. Well, more than likely, we could all think of somebody. Unless you're like the gentleman in the following story I found this past week. I read where a reporter was interviewing an older man on his 100th birthday. You know, we always ask those folks, what's the secret of living so long, right? You know, how did you do it? And um, she asked, what are you most proud of? And, and the older man said, well, he said, I guess I'm proud I don't have an enemy in the world. I don't have a single enemy in the world. And the reporter said, what a beautiful thought. You know, how inspirational. And the 100-year-old um, man said, yep, I outlived every last one of them. I don't think that's exactly what Jesus was talking about when he said, love your enemies. But this is what he did say. And if you have your Bibles and you want to follow along, or maybe uh, you can pull it up on your iPhone real quick, it's Matthew chapter 5, and I'm going to begin um, reading in verse 43. Jesus says this, he says, You have heard that it was said... Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes His Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Wow. That is, uh, that is some stern teaching, isn't it? Can you imagine? And really, if, if you look at the Sermon on the Mount, uh, on the Mount as a whole, it's, it's, I think, the most central teaching and it's the most difficult teaching that Jesus gives in all of this long sermon that he's given. 
And also, I think it may be one of the most well-known passages or, or truths or sayings of Jesus that non-Christians know. And I do also think that uh, from what I've seen and experienced in life, it's one of those sayings and passages that Jesus said that non-Christians will easily throw in the Christian's face. To say, well, you're a Christian, you can't forgive. You're a Christian, you know, you, you have enemies. I thought you were supposed to forgive your enemies. I thought you were supposed to do this or act this way. So I think it's a tough teaching we need to look at. And I believe that we're expected by the world to love and forgive our enemies more than other people groups in the world. <laughs> Well, I don't know about that, but I know that it's so unusual, it's so heartwarming, it's so unexpected, it's so surprising when we do hear of the story of a person or a family forgiving someone else who has deliberately injured or harmed them or harmed someone in their family. We, we perk up. It's one of those good stories in the news. I believe I just heard this week on the news, and I, I, I think it was the shooting in Maryland, that I just heard that the family of the victim, of one of the victims of that shooting, says that they, are, they want to and are forgiving the man who shot and murdered their child. Wow, that's tough, isn't it? That's tough. How do we get to that point? How do we live out that teaching? That is just so difficult. But we do perk up when it happens. There, there's an old story I read of a, of a Baptist pastor during the American Revolution. His name was Peter Miller. And he lived in Pennsylvania, this little town called Ephrata. And he also enjoyed the friendship of George Washington during that day. And there also in this little town in Pennsylvania lived another man, Michael Whitman, who was just this evil-minded sort who did all he could to oppose and humiliate everybody, especially this pastor. Well, one day, Whitman, this scoundrel, was arrested for treason, and he was sentenced to die by George Washington. Well, the story is that Peter Miller, the pastor, traveled 70 miles on foot to Philadelphia to plead for the, the life of this traitor. He goes to George Washington, and Washington says, No, Peter, I, I cannot grant you the life of your friend. My friend, said the pastor, he's not my friend. He's the bitterest enemy I have. What, cried Washington, you've walked 70 miles to save the life of an enemy? That puts the matter in a different light. I'll grant your pardon. And he grants Whitman's uh, sentence and sends him back home with Miller. And the two were no longer enemies, but friends. When this happens, it, it, it's otherworldly. It's not what we want to do in our hearts. It's not what we expect to do. It's not what the world expects us to do. It's kingdom work. It's ushering in the kingdom of God when we learn to forgive our enemies and those that hate us. And so how does Jesus say that we need to do this? A few things this morning. First of all, Jesus says, pray for them. Wow. <laughs> what? Pray. Pray for our enemies. Pray for those that we dislike the most. And, uh, you know, in, in His eternal wisdom, Jesus knows... It is so difficult to hate somebody if you're praying for them. If when you are alone with your Lord and you pray for your family and those that you love and, and those that are sick or uh, things that you need from God and you include in that prayer, and Lord, now let me pray for my enemy or my enemies. It's hard to leave that prayer room if you do that time after time and just hate that person. What do you pray for? 
Well, you can pray for your enemy. You can pray for their salvation if they don't know the Lord. You can pray for their families. That their families um, are, are healthy. That, that, it, that this person has a good relationship with their family. That, they, that they'll be a good wife, a good husband, a good mother, a good father, a good child. You can pray for their health and their well-being. Lord, I don't, I know, I don't like this person, or this person really doesn't like me, but, but nobody deserves difficult health. I pray for their health. You can pray for the relationship that you have with them, that it'll be healed. You can even say, Lord, I, I can't do this on my own. I really don't want to have a relationship with this person. But if there's any way divinely that you can begin to heal the gulf that's between us, I pray for that. Jesus says, pray for our enemies. He says, you've heard it said to um, you know, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. And, and you know, that was the Pharisee rule. That, that's how they interpreted the Old Testament and what God said. They had it all wrong. And the people of Israel said, yeah, that sounds good. You know, let's love each other. Let's only love us, the Jewish people. And, and everybody surrounding us is out to get us. They're our enemies. You know, Jesus says, no, that's not the way. Jesus, in his teaching, another thing says, he, he says, I'm giving you, in fact, the whole Sermon on the Mount, I'll say especially this, he says, I'm trying to give you a picture of what the kingdom of God looks like. I'm giving you a picture of what the kingdom of God looks like. If, if you want to know what, if, if everybody in the world believed in me and had me in their hearts and had the love of God coming through them, this is what the world would look like. We'd love our, even our enemies. Now, we know that we're nowhere close to that, don't we? But Jesus says, as Christians, we're to strive to be like that. And he, he says some very logical things that actually preach themselves. He says, anyone can love those who like us or who are like us, can't we? That doesn't take anything. Even, even those that don't believe love those who love them, most people. Even most people love and like people who are like them. Uh, Tammy and I were commenting, we saw the you know, they put out the happiest cities in the world and countries in the world. I mean, we saw any of that this week. Um, I think the happiest country in the world, I think it's Denmark. And the one thing you notice is everybody's the same. They all look alike. Uh, they all, you know, they, they probably all, you know, have the same lifestyle. There's not a lot of diversity. And, you know, it's easy to be happy or to say we're happy when we're all the same. It's when the differences come in that it's tough. Now, Jesus is, um, is not saying that, you know, love your enemies just like you do your family. We know that family love goes deeper, that it's a different kind of love. But I think what he is saying is that, you know, when we love our family, when we love our friends that we get along with, that's from the heart. That's a heart love. It's easy to do. It, it just flows from us. And it feels good. And we feel people loving us back. But to love our enemies is really not from the heart. It's from our will. It's from our will. We have to have discipline. Spiritual discipline to love our enemies. We have to work at loving those who don't love us. You know, we have to be prepared for the consequences to love those who may never love us back. It's a godly thing. It's a tough thing. It's something of the will. Now, this is what the kingdom of God will look like, and, and we know we're not there yet. But we can strive to be like Jesus. And that's what Jesus, that's, that's really what being a Christian is about. Is trying each day to be a little, a little more, a little more like our Savior that we follow, that saved us from our sin, that we know we're going to spend eternity with, beginning right now. We want to be more and more like Christ every day. 
And that's the third thing, is that loving our enemies, it just allows us to live most like Jesus. We can get to the point where we can love our enemies. We're living most like Jesus. And that's what Jesus says. He, he reminds us, what does that mean? What does that mean that we're most like God when we love everyone? Because God loves everyone. He loves each of us, doesn't he? And he says, think of the way God loves. God, God knows there's people in this world that just will never have anything to do with them. That will... Um, even though when they hear the good news, will reject him. That will even, even um, protest or, or say negative things to encourage other people not to believe in him. But he says, yet God loves them all the same. He sends rain on the just and the unjust. He loves them the same, no matter how they love him. Later on, Paul will say, I always remember this in one of his letters, he said, Jesus died on the cross for us while we were in the midst of sinning against him. Think about that. Jesus died on the cross for us while we were in the midst, while we were in the act of sinning. Jesus still died for us. That is amazing. We were his enemies. And yet he loved us to a point where we can never do that with our enemies. But he gives us the ultimate example. I guess, you know, you know one of my favorite verses, and, and maybe yours just, just says it all, is that for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. So whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He gave his Son, not knowing of any of us, would ever believe in Him, would love Him back. He gave His Son to His enemies. To love our enemies or to try our best to love our enemies is to be probably the most like Jesus we can ever be. It's worth the effort. It's worth the effort. I had a, uh, I have a good friend, and I can't remember the circumstance, but um, I don't know if it was one of these, again, I think he, he lives in Alexandria, and I think it's when this shooting happened with at the baseball game with the congressman. And uh, he was close. They had to lock down the, the church he was working in and all of that. And I think we were talking about that. And he, I don't know if he's talking about that gunman or, or all the people that were doing this stuff. And, and he made a comment that I remember. He says, you know, gosh, I really want to hate this guy. I really want to hate this guy. But he said, God won't let me. I really want to hate this guy, but God won't let me. I thought that was a great, deep walk with God's statement, don't you? And I think that's what Jesus is trying to let us know. Yeah, our human nature wants to hate this guy. Wants to hate this woman. Wants to hate this enemy. This nation, this, this people group. But if Jesus is really in us, Jesus just won't let us. There's too much love in there. There's too much love He's giving us. He just, if we really get to know Him well, won't allow that to happen. <clears throat> There's a story that there was a holy man. He was engaged in his morning meditation under a tree whose roots stretched out over the river bank. And he said during his meditation, he noticed that the river was rising and a scorpion caught in the roots was about to drown. So he, he crawls out over the rushing water on the roots, reaches down and frees the scorpion, tries to, but every time he did so, the scorpion would strike back at him and wouldn't let him rescue him. An observer came along and said to the holy man, don't you know that's a scorpion? It's the nature of a scorpion to want to sting you? To which the holy man replied, Well, that may well be, but it's my nature to save. And must I change my nature because the scorpion does not change its nature? Yeah, there's going to be some people who sometimes we can't even figure it out who are out to get us, who don't like us, who are 
just opposed to whoever we are. Maybe it's because we're Christian. That's their nature. But <clears throat> does their nature towards us mean that we have to change us, who are Jesus' people? Jesus says, no, if you really love me, don't change your nature because someone else's nature is evil. You stay good in me. So I'm going to encourage you to, to add to your prayer list beginning today. Add to your prayer list. This is going to sound crazy, but remember it's Jesus. It's not me asking you to do this. Add to your prayer list those people you don't like. Add to your prayer list those people who don't like you. Add to your prayer list those who persecute you. Add to your prayer list those you consider your enemy. You know, I, I believe that if, if most of us can do that and begin to do that in our prayer life, at least we here at Fairview can help usher in the kingdom of God a little bit. And that's what we're supposed to be doing until Jesus comes again, is ushering in His kingdom. We can usher in the kingdom of God a little more by loving and by praying for our enemies. And we'll, and your life will be better. You can't believe it. It, 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 it. it doesn't make sense. But it's the Jesus way. And that's what we're talking about this fall, is living the Jesus way. And you'll end up, you'll have more peace, you'll have more contentment, and in the end, you'll have more joy because you did it His way than the world's way. We we're going to pray in just a minute as the praise team makes their way back up, then we're going to sing a closing song. And um, I want you to think as you sing and, and as you worship during this last song about what Jesus is asking you to do with His work. Not my word, but His word. Uh, maybe as you sing, I think you can do it. Um, you can probably pray at the same time for somebody that's an enemy. It's somebody you don't like. Somebody that doesn't like you. Or maybe just ask God to lay on your heart who, who, he's, who he's revealing to, uh, to you right now. Or maybe you want to know and, and experience Jesus in a very real way that you haven't been. And you need to ask Him into your heart for forgiveness of your sin, to stop being an enemy of God so that you can cut down on the enemies you have in life. You can do that as well. But let's pray and ask God's Spirit to come on us and really convict us to what He wants us to do with His Word today. And then we'll sing as we pray to Him alone. <coughs> Lord Jesus, thank You for Your Word. It's an unbelievable Word. It's hard Word. It's a difficult teaching. We, it doesn't make sense to us at times. <coughs> But we need to rely on your spirit, Lord. So as we sing this song, Jesus, may, uh, may you just uh, let us know that it's your truth. And may you convict us to what we need to do with what you've taught us this morning. Lord, we ask this in your name. Amen.